Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. Today we're going to talk about the latest human efficacy trial of NMN, a paper published on July the 8th. NMN supplementation enhances aerobic capacity in amateur runners, a randomized double-blind study. First a disclaimer that in this video we are sharing a study that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. The study is run by Guangzhou Sports University and the NMN was provided by Dr. Jun Wang, the CEO of Gene Harbour Hong Kong. From the company's website, we can see he's talking to Dr. David Sinclair. In fact, Dr. Wang is a co-author of a paper with Dr. Sinclair, published last year regarding the metabolism of NMN. Before we get into the paper, here is a quick revision of the results from the NMN clinical trials so far. In November 2019, the results of the first human NMN study was published. It was a safety trial carried out in Japan with doses of NMN up to 500 mg and 10 participants. The outcome was that there was no adverse effects and the trial was able to establish NMN's general safety in humans. The next three are all randomized placebo controlled trials looking at efficacy. The first was a study to see how NMN impacted the metabolic function of pre-diabetic or diabetic postmenopausal women with a dose of 250 mg. It showed increase in insulin sensitivity and muscle remodeling. The next is still under peer review and was examining the effects on NAD levels and age-related muscle dysfunction. This was for 12 weeks with 250 mg per day. The participants were healthy men aged 65 and over. NMN was found to raise NAD levels and help to prevent age-related muscle dysfunction. And finally, this study is about cardiovascular fitness with 48 participants aged from 27 to 50 of both sexes. The dose of NMN was also greater with a maximum of 1.2 grams. This is the one that we will go through today. Interestingly, although it is the third efficacy trial, it has many firsts. The first NMN human study on exercise performance, and the first trial in healthy women, and the first trial with an NMN dose of 1.2 grams. And we are happy to know that according to the paper, even at the dose of 1.2 grams, none of the participants reported any adverse effects. There are a few points I would like to mention here. The trial is focused on the effects of a combination of exercise training and supplementation with NMN. So exercise performance and body composition are the key measurements, and they did not measure blood markers. The trial participants are amateur runners from a running club with an average age of 35. Let me briefly summarize what we can see from this trial. First, the body composition is not significantly changed in the six weeks trial. In physical performance, NMN increased the aerobic capacity during exercise training, and the improvement is likely the result of enhanced oxygen utilization of the skeletal muscles. So let's get into the paper in more detail. Here is the paper. It is the first study to look at whether NMN supplementation enhances performance in healthy people. In this case, aerobic capacity in runners. There have been mouse studies which have shown improved exercise capacity with training and NMN, but this has not been looked at in humans. So this study examined the combination of NMN and exercise on cardiovascular fitness in healthy amateur runners. The study was for six weeks, with 48 participants aged from 27 to 50 years old, who were recreational runners from Guangzhou in southern China. It was a randomized placebo-controlled forearm clinical trial. There were four groups, with 300, 600 or 1200 milligrams per day of NMN and a placebo for control. Each group had 10 male and 2 female participants. The participants had 40 to 60 minute training sessions 5 to 6 times a week. The sessions were aerobic in nature and the participants also cycled and ran during the week. A cardiopulmonary exercise test was performed at the start and the end of the intervention to assess the aerobic capacity of the runners. After 6 weeks they saw an increase in VO2 uptake percent of VO2 max, power at ventilatory threshold and power at the second ventilatory threshold in the 600 and 1200 dosages. To unpack that a little, 
VO2 uptake is a measure of a person's ability to take in and use oxygen. Percentage VO2 max is the percent of the VO2 max the person can sustain over a period of time. What are ventilation threshold 1 and ventilation threshold 2? VT1 is the first ventilation threshold where blood lactate is accumulating faster than it is being cleared and the breathing speeds up to blow off the extra CO2. A higher VT1 implies that the muscles are making better use of oxygen before they are getting into anaerobic metabolism. VT1 is more generally identified as when someone can string together a few words but no longer have a conversation. VT2 is when breathing is no longer adequate to blow off the CO2 and is generally identified as when a person can no longer talk during exercise. Continuing with the results, there was no change in VO2 max, O2 pulse, VO2 related to work rate and peak power, where O2 pulse is a measure of oxygen delivered per heartbeat. The author's conclusion is that the aerobic capacity is increased due to enhanced usage of oxygen by the skeletal muscle. At the beginning and the end of the study, the participants were measured with CPET, the cardiopulmonary exercise test. CPET is a lab test where the level of stress, that is effort, is steadily increased until the participant hits exhaustion, while markers are measured including oxygen usage. In this case, although the participants were runners, they used a stationary bike for the test, rather than a treadmill. They used 50, 100 and 200 milligrams per kilogram per day from mouse models as a base and calculated the human dose equivalent as one tenth. From this, assuming a 60 kilogram person, they calculated the doses of 300, 600 and 1200 milligrams. They saw that larger doses had bigger effects on VT, so it seems that it may improve the muscle ability to process oxygen as the VT threshold happens due to CO2 buildup in the blood from anaerobic metabolism. They did see that NMN did not help with grip strength, push-ups or sit and reach, a stretching test, but 600 milligrams did improve the single leg standing test which measures balance. There have been reports that too much NAD precursor reduced NAMPT content, so it may be that there is not one size fits all. They saw no adverse side effects during the study, even though the largest dose was more than twice that which had been used in earlier studies. So what are the conclusions of the authors? That exercise training combined with NMN supplementation could further lift the ventilatory thresholds in amateur runners in a dose-dependent way and is related to muscles. One of the points to keep in mind is that the participants were already healthy and also quite young. The average age was around 35, so it is good to see further improvements of their ventilatory threshold. The improvements in aerobic capacity is dose-dependent. The improvement is due to the muscle uptake of oxygen rather than in the cardiac system. And they see NMN as a possible way to improve performance of endurance athletes. It's really good to see these studies being done on healthy people and so that we can see the effects of NMN. I have a couple of thoughts on the study. As mentioned, the average age was 35, so there may have been a larger effect if there was more older people. There was no measurements of blood markers, only performance and body measurement. It would have been nice to see whether there was any change in these blood markers. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.